Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Corps. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to run Shovel Knight Treasure Trove on various RK3326 devices. Primarily, I'm going to focus on the RG351P and the RG351M, but this works for a variety of other devices. For example, I got it working on the RGB10 as well as the RG351V. So if you have any of those other devices, go ahead and check out the video description. I have a link there that'll take you to a written guide that'll explain how to do it for all the other devices. And I've made it my goal to get this working on everything, including the Odrego Super as well as the RGB10 Max. So I'll continue to update that written guide as new developments occur. So this is going to be a pretty quick video. Let's dive right into it. First thing you're going to want to do is go to that written guide that I mentioned earlier. And in there, I'm going to have links to everything you're going to need. First things first, you're going to need to purchase and download the game. And this runs off of the Linux version of Shovel Knight, and I've found that the best way to download Linux games like this is through the Humble Store, because everything comes prepackaged already, so you can use it with your Windows PC or your Mac. So after you purchase the game, it's going to give you a link to download the game itself. And here, all you want to do is select the Linux version and then download it onto your computer. From there, you're going to want to use an app like 7-Zip to extract it. We're going to right click on it, go to 7-Zip, and then extract here. Now initially it's actually going to extract a file that it's calling a 4.1b file, which is not correct. But if you actually just go and extract it again, then it's going to give you the folder you need. It's going to be called Shovel Knight. After you have that Shovel Knight folder, you can delete the other two files. And if you open up the Shovel Knight folder, you can compare it against the listing that I already have on the website. And that way you can verify that you have the correct files. Okay, all you have to do after that is just download one file that I have hosted on my website, and it's going to contain some of the library files that your device is going to need in order to run the game. So you'll have a Box86 folder, which again you can verify against the website as well as a shovelknight.sh file. This is called a shell script. This is basically the executable code that's going to start the game itself. You can also compare that against the website. Okay, so once you have these two folders and this one sh file, you're actually ready to go. So go ahead and plug in the SD card for your device, and this is gonna work with 351 Elec or Arc OS. Then just navigate to the ports folder, and then just move these three things over. It's going to take a minute. It's about a half a gig altogether of files. And actually after that, you're done. So go ahead and eject the SD card, put it back into your device, and let's start it up. So you're going to find the game under your ports folder, and it'll say Shovel Knight. And man, I have way too many ports in this folder. It's crazy how many I got here. Okay, so as I boot this up, I'm going to let it run in real time here, just so you can see how long it takes to load up the game initially. When you're in the actual game itself, it's going to run perfectly, but it does take a little bit of time just to load everything. So there we are, we're in the game now. Now I personally have never really played Shovel Knight. I think I actually own it on the Switch, but I've never really gotten around to playing it. I think this is going to be the perfect opportunity to try out this game. So one more tip while I have you here, I'm going to show you how to download box art for this game. I'm going to do it for Arc OS here. So you just hit select and then go to edit this game's metadata. And then just go down to the bottom and select scrape. Then it's going to search for all sorts of games that use the name Shovel Knight on it. And you can kind of browse through here and pick whatever game you think is most appropriate. I'm just going to download this first one here, which is actually for the 3DS. And it's going to take a minute. It'll download the box art and the video and things like that. Once it's done downloading, you can just go ahead and back out to the main menu, and there it is. Okay, so a couple quick notes before we actually wrap up here. Number one is that the controls themselves are configurable completely within the game itself. So if you don't like where the jump button is, or you want to have other functions mapped to specific buttons, it's very easy to go into the settings menu and map the entire control scheme yourself. So that's really handy about this game. And secondly, if you've already purchased this game, for example, on Steam or GOG.com, when you try to install the Linux version of this game, it's not going to be as easy as clean cut as what we just did. But what I recommend you do is check out my Undertale video, which I did recently, and it shows you how to unpack and install a Linux game onto a Windows PC, so that way you can extract the files you need. 
So if you're in that boat, go ahead and check out the written guide where I link to that Undertale guide. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's not every day where I'm going to tell you to go and buy a game that costs $40, but from what I've heard, this game is totally worth it. So let me know in the comments below, have you played Shovel Knight before and is it worth 40 bucks? I suspect that it's yes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!